Just going to show you a couple of blocks for the green garden hanger. We've got our batting stitched down to our stabilizer. Now we're doing the placement line for our sky on one of our blocks. So the, this will be the lower left block. Stitching our fabric down and then we'll come across and we'll trim this edge here back to two to three mils from the stitching and do a placement line for next piece and the next piece. Put our first shade of green. Make sure you leave enough on the side so as that it's included in the seam allowance. Then we're going to trim these back. See they've left in the seam allowances on the sides, left and right. And placement for our last piece of little darker contrast green. Again, leaving enough fabric and the seam allowances on the side and at the bottom. Now we're going to start our embroidery for our, our fence, our posts and railings. See the railings. If you think you might want to do a white picket fence or something like this, you may need to go over this twice so as you get the density enough to actually get rid of that join between the sky and the grass. And we're just going to do the sides of our, our grass and do our placement for our first part of our first shrub, which is a greenery. Again, another contrast. Placement line. Stitch down and then a trim back. This will be for the pot. Trim it back. And then we're just doing a satin stitch around our details of both our shrubbery and our pot. Next. Just follow the, the, the sequence of steps. One more pot. Do our shrubbery. And finish off the satin stitch around the edge of our pot. All fun and simple. Move from the hoop, take our pins out of of our stabilizer and then we're going to trim up our seam allowances to half an inch. There we go. Now we'll do another one, has a different technique in it. So stitching down our batting, we'll trim our batting back to two to three mils away from the stitching line. Batting always sits inside the fabric exterior perimeter stitching so as that it's not caught in the seam but it still gives you enough loft. Now 
make sure our fabric's tall, high enough so that we're actually going to give ourselves a half inch seam when we're completed. This will be the upper right panel seat, so we've got enough there. Upper right panel, so we're going to do the outline for our birdhouse and for our sign. Because it's a darker fabric and I want to use a lighter fabric, we're going to trim out the inside of that placement line so as that we don't get any shading when we add our lighter fabric. Now, if you don't want to do this, you could just actually put a piece of white fabric underneath the fabric you're going to apply and that will do the same effect but quite like just taking this out it's very simple very quick very easy and you don't get a build up of fabric or different thicknesses and or density of stitches i'm just going to do some suggestion outlines for clouds The hinges for the sign. Another little pot. Satin stitch around the edge of our pot and then a couple of rows of Satin stitch across the top to give it a different look. We've got one more to go in there, I think. So now we have the that top post, which will be the hanger for our sign. Don't worry about the gap in it. And our post itself and the post knob. Placement line for our birdhouse. You can see the shadowing quite clearly in this. It would be a lot darker if I hadn't cut that, that away behind the birdhouse shape. It would have been a lot darker fabric, or you would have seen the blue coming through. Ever so slightly, but it would have been there. Cute little love heart and the front door of the birdhouse. Now, placement for our fabric for the sign. And the frame. You could put something else instead of the welcome, just ignore that stitching and add something with your machine. Now we've got the tail feathers for our bird. Bit of fun and its beak and an eye. Again, move our pins and trim our seams back to half an inch. Let's lay our uh, four blocks out. They're all of a similar, um, they're, they're of similar technique, so there's no sense in showing all four. 
block stitching out. So we're putting pins into the corner stitches. So we're using a, our silicon mat so we can put the pin through, matching your last stitches and then check it and put it into the other underside. Do the same for the bottom one. So we're going to do, we're going to join the pieces for rows, then we'll join the rows together. We're stitching just inside the outside perimeter stitching line. So there's two lines. There's one line on the very outside, and the next line is the batting line. So we're stitching in between. Make sure your stitching is consistent. Don't have to start at the very, very edge. You can start into your work, just a few stitches into your seam allowance. So that's, that's back stitching into your seam allowance and then straight line through. Make sure those lines are sitting on top of each other, but you don't have to be, you don't have to stitch right to the very end of the block. No need. Here's one. Line on top of line. Need to match that fence post. There we go. So rail and grass has to match there. Then we have to open our seam allowance. Do that on both pieces and then we're going to right sides together and join that row. So pin at the top, pin on the seam, pin at the bottom. Make sure you keep those stitching lines on top of each other when we're sewing through. All right, let's make some loops. I like doing a wide seam allowance, so you follow your notes, a wide seam allowance, so when the seam allowance is opened up, it fills the gap inside the loop. I'll show you what I mean. Let's get rid of those threads. So when that seam allowance is opened up, it will be the same width as the loop when it's finished. So that opened up seam will stay open inside the loop tube and give it an extra layer of fabric. Okay, so that's that, that seam is open and it holds its shape. Saves having to use interfacing or interlining. Let's just machine base that together just within the seam allowance at the bottom. So there we have our pair of loops, and that will go into the top of our work. We need to measure the width and the height of our joined blocks. We cut, cut some three-inch strips of, of borders. So you want a pair, narrow pair for the top and bottom borders, and the matching piece of batting. Okay, so we've got a matching piece of batting. Put a piece of, piece of card down, put our batting down, and we're going to get lightly spray baste the batting and attach the fabric to it. Just the easiest way of doing borders. 505. Just a light spray, nothing heavy. We do that for the top and bottom and the left and right for the borders. 505 is easy to sew through. So we just basically laid it on and did a half inch seam. Okay, and we follow the seam allowance on the underside. Okay, so we've just attached those with a half inch seam. Then we want to peel our batting off within the seam allowance and we want to trim that little strip of batting off so as it doesn't create a double up of bulk when we actually open that seam up or press that seam down. Because we're going to press that seam down. So it will give us a ridge where we can actually then stitch once the um, wall hanging is complete. 
And again, we do the same thing for the sides, half inch seam, attach the batting with some 505, and we want to then pull that pit layer of batting away from the seam allowance, trim it back to two to three mils from the, the seam stitching. Right, give that a light press. And we want to put our loops on. I like to line them with the side of that seam up the top there so as they run with the inside of the border. Clip them into position. And then machine base them into position just to hold them in place. We want to measure width and height and have a piece of lining or backing that is perhaps, I'll say, an inch or so wider and higher than what our finished blocks joined are. Let's just pin it into position. We want to leave a gap at the bottom of about five inches, so I'm just planning on measuring out from that center seam where that the green join the center seam is, I'm just measuring out two and a half inches either side of that. So that's my gap where I'm going to actually pull the work through when it's finished. So let's carry on pinning around the edge. Go to the machine. We're stitching about, well, <coughs> Half an inch seam allowance. You can do less if you wish, it does not matter. Oops, one more stitch. Use the edge of the presser foot against the edge of the fabric. So when my needle was swung back to the far left hand side, it gives me exactly half an inch. A shy half an inch. Back tape for that opening. That's the start and stop points is where that opening is. Trim our seam allowances around those left and right and top seams back to a quarter of an inch and a half an inch at the bottom to give us a step. Now you'll see that in the next next um, clips of, I think it's time I had a new blade on my rotary cutter, I think. And just clip those corners off. So as they're not bulky when they are turned through. Last corner, just clip that off. See the little step at the bottom there where I've got my turn through area? So it's basically a quarter of an inch up to that opening and then it's half an inch there. So as that gives you a little bit more fabric to work with when you're turning it through. Right, let's berth this hanger. So pull it through. Now you can either poke the ends out with an awl or a chopstick or a purple thing or pink thing or what have you. I'm just poking them out by my fingers and just turning them to a point and then I wriggle the corners out. What we used to call pinch and turn. Right, give that a very light press. So for finishing, we need to actually hand sew our opening closed. Idea was to get that outside border as flat and straight as possible. I always do a little bit of a curve there because when I actually put it together, I pull it right down and it keeps it nice and tight. Make sure that bottom line, that bottom border is nice and straight. Don't want any lumps in it. Turn the work over, let's just pin that 
opening there closed. With a matching thread, just slip stitch that opening closed. Now, you can see I've got some stitching in the ditch, and I've just stitched literally in the ditch on those cross seams and around the edge of the border. Enjoy.